All right, today we have a 2013 Mustang GT. Um, we are going to be replacing the clutch and the flywheel on it. Um, we've already got it on the rack here. We got our, our new clutch from Auto Parts Direct to you. Um, nice racing clutch. Okay, so the first thing we're, we're going to do um, is disconnect our negative terminal. We're going to be taking off the starter, and because of that, you don't want power going to it. So to be safe, we'll disconnect this. It's not really necessary, um, but we're going to go ahead and remove the, the H-pipe coming off of the exhaust manifolds. Um, it'll just give us a little bit more clearance underneath. To do so, there's two bolts under the hood um, that you get to, and then the other two we get to from underneath the car. So down here, if you look down past the side of the motor, there is a nut that goes to the top of the H-pipe. Um, part of the reason we're removing this, the, the customer asked if we could install this performance H-pipe. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and throw that in for him. All right, so we're going to try to break loose the uh, driver's side one now. Okay, so before we get started underneath, uh, what we're going to do is disconnect the shifter up here. This is actually pretty simple. This whole panel here is just held in by snaps, so we should just be able to to pull up on the, there it goes, panel here, then it should come off. And the shifter handle is just threaded on. So we'll just unthread that. Set that aside. Pull that up. Just one plug over here. And then that's pushed to the side here. Okay, so this rubber boot just pulls up and out of here. You can see the wire that goes to the aftermarket stereo there. Let's set that aside. Okay, here's our shifter assembly. Okay, so now I'm going to try to take off these uh, other nuts for this exhaust flange here. I'm using the double wrench trick just to break them free. Now we're going to do the other side. Okay, now we're going to take off this cross crossbar here. Um, it just has to come out of the way so the transmission can drop. Okay, next I'm going to go around and disconnect all the electrical connectors. Uh, we have a speed sensor, we have oxygen sensors, uh, we have another, I think that's the reverse switch sensor over here. This yellow wire is a add-on for the aftermarket stereo. 
to the speed sensor. Okay, now I'm going to loosen these exhaust clamps on the back of the H-pipe. Okay, came down easier than I thought. <laughs> so now, I'm just gonna wiggle this H pipe out of here. <laughs> Unexpectedly sooner than I thought. I think this goes like that. There we go. Okay, so now I'm going to disconnect the front drive shaft flange. I'm going to put a mark here so that we know the direction it came off and what direction to put it back on when we go to install it later. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing on the back, which I'll show you when we get back there. So now I'm going to go ahead and take off the four bolts holding that universal joint flange on. Okay, so you can see where I put my marks here for the uh, rear flange to line back up again. I'm gonna go ahead and take out these bolts. Okay, so now we're gonna remove the flange bolts holding up the, the center carrier bearing. When I take out the second one, this thing's going to try to fall. So, Josh, I'll hold up the back if you can grab the front. There goes things. All right. Is that coming free? There it goes. Thank you. Okay, so now I'm taking off the starter. Um, there's one bolt on top that's not easy to get to. I'm able to get in there with a, a ratcheting gear wrench. And I can't even see the bolt, so I'm doing it all by feel. And I just broke it loose. I'm gonna see if I can get it out with my hand now. Aha, all right, hardest starter bolt is out. Now the other two should be relatively easy, hopefully. There's one here. All right, so I removed the, uh, there were two transmission bolts here on the, behind the oil pan you saw me remove. 
Um, starter's free. All the electrical should be disconnected. There might be one more up top. Uh, we're going to move to the back of the transmission now. We have to disconnect the shifter and the cross member. So we'll move back there now. And I'm taking off these two 10 millimeter nuts that hold on this bushing bracket, which should lower the shifter housing enough that we can get to the bolts back on the inside that we were at at the beginning of the video. Okay, so now we're back inside the car again. And you can see with the, the shifter bushing drop down, the shifter has dropped quite a bit so we can now get to these 10 millimeter bolts. Oh yeah, don't forget to put your transmission back in neutral before you pull this out of the way. All right, now, shifter pops out. And we'll just set that inside here. And I'm gonna put a rag kind of inside that to protect dirt, protect it from getting dirt down inside there. Okay, so now we're gonna remove the transmission cross member. I'm gonna go ahead and take off the four that hold it to the frame and then the three that hold it into the transmission itself. One important thing to note, I've got a, uh, a spin jack supporting the transmission here. Um, you don't want to take this off without the transmission supported. Okay, so now we're going to lower the transmission a little bit so that we can gain access to the bell housing bolts. And we've got one, two, three over here on the side. We've got one, probably two, right up on the very top of the transmission, which are going to be hard to see. We have to get that with a long extension. And then on this side, uh, we have, looks like two. So I'm going to start by getting the hardest ones out first, the top two. There's one more wire harness zip tie thing holding the harness to the transmission I'm just trying to undo now. We want these all undone before we actually go to pull out the transmission so that we don't have to do it while we're fighting with the transmission. You can see the base of it. Can you see that? Nah, it doesn't matter. It's just, it's one of these little plastic things that retains the harness. So I'm going to try to undo that real quick. All right, so we got two bolts still holding the transmission up. So at this point, um, one thing I still need to do, I've been putting it off because it's going to make a mess, is to remove the slave cylinder um, line. So this is the line going into the slave cylinder. There's a little metal clip here on the side, which I'm going to try to pry out of here. So this here is the, the metal clip that just pops in there. And this should just pop off now. The reason I've been putting it off, it's gonna make a mess. It's gonna lose, we're gonna have brake fluid coming out of there. All right, now I'm just gonna pop off this line here. And you can see us losing the brake fluid.
Okay, so you can see here we have the transmission out. What we're looking back at here is the back of the pressure plate. So we're going to go ahead and take this off. Um, we've got a bunch of 13 millimeter bolts going all the way around. So I'm just going to take them all off except for one. Okay, so I've got all the bolts out with the exception of this one that's just finger tight here. Um, as I take this off, this whole thing's going to come off. This inner clutch disc is going to try to fall out, so just be aware of that. You don't want it falling on your toes. I'm going to try to grab it with my thumb at the same time. There we go. So here's our old clutch. Part of the problem, and this is a, a known issue with these cars, at high RPMs, the clutch will not fully release all the way when you go to press in the, the pedal. So the clutch, or the fix was a new design of the clutch. So we're hoping that resolves this issue. So now we're gonna replace the flywheel. To take off the flywheel, we just have to take off all these bolts. Well, the very last one, I'm going to hold the flywheel while I take it out. Just to keep it from falling. Now I should be able to Okay. So it's tighter than I thought. If you look, there's threaded holes on the flywheel itself. What that's for is to actually break the flywheel loose. So I'm putting one, this one here, just to kind of hold the flywheel from falling. And I'm putting one on each side here. And I'll tighten these down a little bit at a time. And that should walk the flywheel off of the crankshaft. There it goes. Okay, so we got in here and it turned out we didn't have the pilot bearing tool to remove the pilot bearing. Uh, we tried various tricks and tips that can supposedly get it out if you don't have the right tool, but to no avail. So we ran down to the local auto parts store and borrowed their loaner tool. Um, this is very, very useful if you're doing a pilot bearing in a clutch shop. Um, basically what happens, you slide this part into the pilot bearing itself when you tighten this down, these little fingers expand out and they grab it from the back. And then you tighten down this nut and that will pull out the pilot bearing. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in. You just put it in all the way there. Then as I tighten this down, those fingers will start to expand out. And then they'll eventually grab on like that. And then as I tighten this nut, that will pull the whole thing out, hopefully, if we're lucky. So we got our old bearing out. Um, it ended up being quite a bit of work. This thing was seized in there pretty good. Um, I'm just going to say, as far as a tool, I would recommend if, if Ford actually makes a OEM tool to get this out, it's probably worth it. The, the universal one did not work well, and I had to kind of resort to drastic measures getting that out. Um, 
because of the time I spent, we stopped videotaping, so unfortunately we don't have it caught on video. But um, I did get the old bearing out, and I'm gonna, gonna knock the new one in. Hopefully it goes in smoother than the old one came out. Beautiful. Okay, new bearings in. So I don't forget, we're gonna put our uh, sensor ring on there. And now I'm gonna set our new flywheel up there. Gonna go. Got a 50 50 chance of this being right. And you'll know it's right because the bolts will only go in one particular way. So if all the bolts actually start. I'm not actually starting them yet because I need, I'm going to put Loctite on these, but I just want to make sure it's lined up. Okay, it looks like we're going to be good there. This one? Yeah. Oh, you're right. Okay, just... No? Okay. Alright, so it looks like that might not be the right way. Alright, so I'm going to put all the bolts in. I'm putting um, some Loctite on these just to prevent them from ever backing out. I'm gonna snug them down with my air ratchet, but I'm not gonna torque them yet because we're gonna hand torque them in just a minute. So you'll see me use my impact wrench, but I'm not actually tightening them yet. Okay, so I got our uh, flywheel all cleaned up, got all the grease off of it. Um, the flywheel is torqued down. And I shouldn't have put this up there yet. But this is how we're going to put the uh, pressure plate on along with the alignment tool. And we're going to get it right in the center so that the alignment tool just slides in and out simply. So turns out with this uh, pressure plate and clutch kit, um, I had to knock out the dowel out of the factory uh, or the factory dowel pins out of the flywheel and install the ones that they, they include. Um, took me a while to figure that out, but once I got it, we were able to get this lined up. Also, it uses less bolts than the factory one. Um, it uses, it's got an instruction sheet that explains it, but this one and this one. Um, and you can see part of the bolt hole back there that won't be used. So anyway, it's lined up right now. I got to pull it back off and put it back on with the pressure plate behind it.
Okay, now again, I'm gonna go around and just snug these up. I'm not gonna torque them with my air wrench, or air ratchet, but I'm just gonna snug them, and then I'll go around and torque them. You'll see as I go, the fingers start to pull themselves in. That's normal. That really illustrates why you want to go in the crisscross pattern so that it all tightens down evenly. All right, so I've got all the bell housing bolts tight. Uh, now I'm putting the starter back in. Got my three 10 millimeter bolts. And I'll go ahead and put those in and tighten them down. Okay, so at this point I'm gonna go ahead and lift the transmission back up so that we can get the cross member back in place. All right, so I'm gonna put the cross member back up. You can see here, it indicates which way is front. I'm going to start just by putting these bolts in by hand. And you see our transmission has to go up higher. At this point, I'm going to lower the car um, and put the shifter back in. It, we're probably not going to show that on video because it's the exact same as doing what we did earlier in reverse. So I got the shifter bolted back in on the inside of the car. So now I'm going to put these two 10 millimeter bolts back on this rear shifter bushing. And next we will be putting the drive shaft in, followed by the exhaust. Okay, so I'm putting the drive shaft back in and I'm
Okay, so we got our front drive shaft bolts in. Now we're gonna switch to the back and retighten the, the rear drive shaft bolts. And you can see we got the original white marks lined up that we made so that everything's lined up correctly. All right, so I need to swap the oxygen sensors over. I took these out of the original H-pipe. There's one. And two. And I'll just tighten those down a little bit. I'll give them one more, one more snug once they're up in the car. But this is just in case I forget. They're mostly tight. All right, so we're gonna start on the exhaust. We're gonna put the uh, H pipe into the factory tubes here. Hopefully, if they fit. Well. Okay, so I'm actually gonna do the front pipes first at least get them started. All right, so our new exhaust comes with bolts. Unfortunately, I didn't think ahead on this one and order myself some new um, exhaust gaskets, so I have to reuse the old ones. If they leak, then I'll just have to uh, change them out at a later date. But they shouldn't, because they're metal gaskets. All right, so we're going to line up this other half of the H-pipe here. Okay. This will all push together and we'll be able to push it up and then tighten everything down and Hopefully it all falls in place nicely. We're gonna snug up our clamp here. Okay. Let me loosen this one. This is a little tighter than I thought. I need to be able to push up on them. So we had two more bolts that went into this bottom um, transmis transmission to engine spacer, which I'm putting in. Other than that, we are just about done. We've got our exhaust back up. We've got our drive shaft in. All the drive shaft bolts are tight. 
We've got our cross member in. Those bolts are tight. All the other transmission bolts are tight. Starter is in. Starter is tight. It's a good idea to kind of run through a mental checklist. This thing is in and tight. Okay, so we're back under the hood now. Um, gonna show you a few things that we did earlier off camera. Um, when we were struggling with the transmission, it turned out the issue was that the engine, the engine cover that sits up top here uh, was hitting the strut tower brace. So we ended up dropping down the car, taking off the strut tower brace and the engine cover. Um, so that's a very important step if you're gonna be doing this job is to, to remove that. I also removed the air intake hose because it looked like it was binding up a little bit. So I'm going to pop that back on real quick. And then I'll put my engine cover and then the strut tower brace back on. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and reconnect the battery terminal on the negative. And lastly, I'm going to fill up the brake fluid reservoir. The clutch hydraulics run off the same hydraulics as the brakes. So when you saw all that fluid draining out earlier, that was coming directly out of our master cylinder. So we're just going to fill this guy up. Now the slave cylinder in this car is supposed to be a self-bleeding type, so shouldn't have to do any kind of fancy bleeding. Hope not, because there's no bleeder valve to do anything with. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna wash my hands real quick and then I'm gonna try pumping up the clutch and see if we have a pedal. Okay, so now I gotta put the interior back together. Um, while I'm doing that, I'll be sitting here pumping the clutch pedal, trying to bleed it and prime it. 